Welcome back to Safe Space with Kira Graves. My name is Kira Graves and I will be your host for this evening. So welcome back. Um, I hope you enjoyed last week's episode. I know it was a bit heavy. Um, after editing it, I was like, is this podcast too heavy for you guys? I don't know. Also, sometimes I feel like I get in my head and I think that I'm too serious all the time. Like, that I can't laugh and joke about things, which is like, obviously that's not true because I do do that. But I don't know, sometimes we can be, you know, so wrapped up in like our healing journey and all that, that like we miss being playful and like childlike, at least for me. I mean, I can only speak for myself. I used to be a very laughy, jokey, silly kid. And then I feel like I kind of had to grow up really fast I got my first like professional job at the age of four. I started making money when I was literally a fucking toddler. And at age 16, I was working a basically a full-time job on a set with adults and had to like miss a bunch of school. And I've always been like the youngest person in my family, like almost the youngest the youngest like family member. So I've always been the kid and I've always had to like hang out around adults. Like I never really hung out with like people my age, only occasionally at school and whatnot. Long story short is I feel like I grew up a little bit too fast. And now I'm like 24 and I'm like, whoa, I feel old. Like I feel really old right now. And like, I'm only 24, come on, come on. I also feel like I'm doing so so much like I'm I'm doing so much and <laughs> like working on my mental health and healing and blah 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 it's just like it can be a lot sometimes my mom gave me this advice probably a couple months ago and she was like hey like it's great that you're healing and working on your mental health but like don't be afraid to have fun sometimes like don't be afraid to be silly and childlike and and enjoy your life. I was like, okay, damn, you really hit the nail on the head on that one. You really just called me out, mom, thanks. Um, yeah, so since then I've been thinking about like, am I being too serious? Do I, do I have fun anymore? Of course I do. But do I do the types of activities that like my child self loved to do? Sometimes that can be healing in itself. The other night I couldn't sleep and I got up and Lauren was out here because they couldn't sleep and they were doing oracle cards and we have this um, spirit animal oracle deck and they were doing their own oracle cards and then after that I was like it was literally 4 a.m. I like stumble in I'm like can you do mine can you do my oracle cards I'm like half awake so half asleep and I got like six cards and four of the six now maybe three of the six were about being playful, embracing that childlike energy, that curiosity, that wonder. The Oracle card was like, have you lost your childlike energy? Like, have you become dull and boring? And I'm just like, oh my God, Oracle card, stop it right now. So yeah, after that, I was like, okay, shit, that's a great idea. And then Sorry, my, my brain is like all over the place right now. I know I always talk about my Louise Hay book, right? The You Can Heal Your Body book. Whenever I have any sort of like physical thing going on with my body, like a, you know, sensation or an ache or a pain or whatever, I go in that book right away and I look up like what it means. Like what is the symbolic emotional meaning to this physical like ailment or body part sensation. And lately I've been waking up with a cough. Like right when I wake up in the morning, I like, it almost feels like I have asthma and like it doesn't happen throughout the day, but it's always in the morning when I wake up, which is really weird. <sighs> See, I'm breathing perfectly fine now, but yeah, in the morning, I'll wake up and cough up a bunch of phlegm. <laughs> Sorry, CMI. And a couple of days ago, there was literally blood in the phlegm. And I'm like, oh my God, this is... <sighs> Trying not to get triggered with my health anxiety. But instead of getting triggered with my health anxiety, I was like, okay, how can we pay attention to this body signal and 
act accordingly, you know, instead of freaking out about it and getting scared and Googling, which I always used to do is like Google every single symptom I had, like runny nose. Oh, what does this mean? Oh my God, I could have cancer. It always leads to like, you may have cancer. So I stopped, I stopped Googling a while ago because that was really bad. And I'm so proud of myself that I did not Google and I did not call anyone being like, oh, what does this mean? Because that's another thing that I, I did a lot when I was really taken over by my like health, anxi- health anxiety. So instead of doing that, I went in my Louise Hay book and it said that lungs represent uh, the capacity to take in life fully. You know, breathing is like a birthright. But for the past couple of years, I haven't felt that I have had the right to breathe. You know, especially with COVID and like how we were wearing masks and how I would walk past people on the street and like literally hold my breath when I walk past people on the street or in the grocery store. And like COVID, you know, is a respiratory illness. And it's just been so like drilled into everyone's brains that like we don't have the freedom to breathe anymore or else we might get sick. Isn't that fucked up? (sighs) That's crazy. So I know that this all ties together. I know, I know that it does. And this is literally me like working shit out, by the way. Like Lauren's on vacation right now. I'm home alone working through my thoughts. And like this podcast is a way for me to do that. So just bear with me. This might be mumbo jumbo, but I'll, I promise I'll get to a conclusion at the end. <laughs> so yes, that's what lungs meant was like, the capacity to take in your life fully. Because when you don't breathe, you don't have your life, right? And I looked up blood, and blood represented um, joy flowing throughout your body. Or maybe like a lack of joy, a joy, joy that is running out. And so if there was blood in my mucus, in my lungs, it has to do something with me not feeling like I can enjoy my life fully. And that really dawned on me because I've just had so much difficulty lately with going outside of my home and feeling safe. It's insane. Like, I do live in a big city, which kind of makes it worse. And I did recently have an experience where Lauren and I were with our friend and our friend got literally hate crimed for being gay, like in front of our eyes on the public transit. And after that, it just like solidified how scared I was to just be out in public and how like, you know, shit like this happens. And Lauren and I have been, you know, hate crimed as well, not in not in a physical way, but in a verbal way. We've been like yelled at a lot, yelled at on the streets for holding hands. We used to get lots of stares and people yelling at us, calling us dykes and bitches and whatever the fuck, stupid people. This city is a little bit unhinged. (laughs) So it's kind of hard to be zen in a place like this. So yeah, since that thing happened with our friend that we witnessed, I've just felt even more increasingly closed down, especially in public, feeling like I can't express myself, feeling like I can't be loud or I can't take up space. I can't show myself in public because I'm scared of unhinged people taking their anger out on me. (sighs) Or like harassing me. Like I've been, I've had such a bad issue with people harassing me on the street and like objectifying me like misogynistically for my whole entire life, especially when I was a teenager. Catcalling, harassment, following, just like horrible shit. So long story short is that like, I've always felt very unsafe in public as a queer woman. This is all coming to a head now because I'm realizing everything and how do I feel safe? That's my challenge right now. It's like, and I know, I know how to. It all comes from within, right? In my last episode, I literally just said, feeling safe comes from an internal sense of safety and security within yourself and within your body. And I haven't felt safe even being in this body with my identity and everything. Like I have not 
felt safe to be me. So I've been really working on my safety, doing lots of mantras, trying to convince myself that I am always safe in this body and that nothing is going to hurt me. And I think, again, this comes down to inner child healing. <laughs> because my inner child doesn't feel safe. The other day I was at a Greek restaurant. Lauren and I were eating some cheese at a Greek restaurant. Don't worry, I had my lactate. It was really loud in there and hectic and noisy. Uh, and I started to get anxiety. I started to panic. So I went downstairs to the bathroom and I talked to my inner child in the mirror. I was like, hey, I know that you feel unsafe right now. Like my body started shaking. That's how I knew that I had, that I was not feeling okay is because I started like shivering. You know, when you like have a fever and your whole body starts shivering. I get that when I have anxiety. And that was like a really prominent indicator when I was younger of my extreme anxiety that I had. Like I would get the shivers like every night just because of how like unsafe and, and anxious I felt. Um, so again, I started to get that feeling and I was like, oh, I know what this is. Like I know the shivering feeling. Like I'm actually not cold. I'm not that cold. Like I'm wearing a sweatshirt. We're indoors. I'm actually not cold. It's like my body's reaction to like my inner child being scared. And so, yeah, I talked to myself in the mirror. I was like, Kira, I promise you, I've got you. You're safe. I promise that nothing is going to hurt you and that I am going to keep you safe. Because when I was younger, I hated that I had to rely on other people to keep me safe. So I'm working on now talking to my younger self and being like, I'm keeping you safe now. Like 24-year-old Kira is keeping six-year-old Kira safe. Like, you don't have to worry anymore. You, you don't have to stress anymore. We can be in loud environments and we don't have to have a panic attack. Circling back, I think, like, the joy, the life has been sucked out of me a little bit, uh, especially in the past three years. And maybe you can relate to this, too. I hope you can relate to this, too. Let me know because I kind of feel alone out here speaking into the abyss about this. Um, yeah, I just, I, I feel like a lack of childlike energy, a, a lack of playful energy. I even have felt a lack of sexual desire, which at the end of the day is like playing, right? Like sex is a very like playful experience where you're experiencing bliss and you're very in the present moment. And like, I haven't even allowed myself to do that. And every time I go outside, I'm on guard. I'm, you know, I'm I'm trying to be hyper aware of my surroundings. I'm, I'm anxious when there's lots of people or when there's a person that's like talk, even talking really loud on the streetcar. I'm like, ah, what is, what is that? I've tried my best to not draw any attention to myself. Therefore, I have shrunken myself down and dimmed my own light as a survival technique which makes sense. It makes complete sense. But I'm done with that. Like, I'm so fucking done. I don't want to be on guard like this all the time. I don't want to be so serious. Like, once I just relax, like, I am going to attract experiences that reflect my energy, my relaxed energy. And if I focus more of my energy on being playful and finding joy in my day and maybe doing things that my younger self loves to do, I will attract more experiences that reflect that. So I'm making it an effort to play more, be more childlike, be more joyful, laugh more. It's good for the soul, man. And I need it. Oh, Lord knows I need it. And maybe you need it too. I don't know. Something called me to talk about this today. So maybe you need it too. <laughs> a few things that I'm doing that really help my inner child feel alive are I went roller skating the other day for my birthday. And that was super fun because I felt like a bird. I felt like I was flying through that rink. And like I felt so free and open and light and happy. And I was dancing. And I felt like I could trust myself on those roller skates, even though I was on wheels. Like I really, excuse me, I had a moment of like surrender and just trusting myself um, that I can like keep myself up on these 
skates. Coloring and drawing and painting is really fun too. Dancing and singing. Singing is another thing that I used to love and I've lost that love and desire for singing in the past couple of years. But this morning I played one of my favorite Ella Fitzgerald records, the one that um, my grandma, my Nona, who used to listen to, who passed away in 2020. So that was like also like that really derailed my life because we were really close. Um, And she was a jazz singer and I am a jazz singer. And so when she died, I felt like a part of me died. And I kind of like lost my voice a little bit. Like not actually, but I just lost my desire to sing. So this morning I played that record and I sang. I belted my heart out. It felt so good. And there was some phlegm that was coming up in my throat. But by the end, I felt like clear. Like my lungs felt clear. My sinuses felt clear. My throat was clear. Like singing was so therapeutic this morning. (sighs) And I want to do more things that you know, are outside of my comfort zone. Adventure, traveling, you know, doing activities and sports that I'm not used to. So for example, roller skating. Um, Lauren wants to take me skiing next winter. I want to do that. I'm going to Seattle next weekend for a work trip. And like, normally I'd be super scared to leave my house, but I'm like, you know what? This is a cool opportunity. I'm going to go to fucking Seattle, see what's up. I'm glad that we talked about this. I feel a lot better. This is literally, this was so therapeutic for me. I am going forward, going to embrace that joy. I'm going to find that childlike curiosity, that childlike fun, because I think it'll be really good for the soul after everything that's gone on the past three years. No one is fucking talking about how they are coping after this pandemic. So I'm so glad that I am. But I almost feel like alone out here because no one's like everyone almost seemed to go back to normal. And I get it. Like you kind of want to put the past in the past and be like, oh, whatever. That didn't that didn't happen. <laughs> but it's had such a strong effect on my energy. It derailed my energy. So now I have to like work extra hard to get to the like emotional place of where I want to be. Everything seems so much harder after the pandemic. So I'm so glad that we can talk about this stuff on this podcast. Please let me know what kinds of topics you want me to talk about. Right now, I'm kind of just letting the ideas come to me and I will still continue doing that. But if there's a specific topic that you want me to cover, I would love to do that. Please go rate me on Apple Podcasts and in the comments, in the review, Uh, Let me know what you want me to talk about on my next episode. I really, really appreciate you listening and following me on this journey so far. And I hope you got something out of this episode. I know I did. (laughs) I love you. Stay safe and do something that sparks joy. Do something that your child self really loved to do this week and see how it makes you feel. Yay. I love you. Bye. See you later.